हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू इंजीनियर्स एकेडमी डू सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल इफ़ यू आर हेयर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम विच सीज दैट इफ गियर ए रोटेट्स विद अ कांस्टेंट एंगुलर एक्सेलरेशन ऑफ नाइन्टी रेडियन पर सेकंड स्क्वायर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम रेस्ट डिटर्मिन द टाइम रिक्वायर्ड फॉर गेयर डी टू अटेन एन एंगुलर विलासिटी ऑफ सिक्स रिवोल्यूशन पर मिनट Also find the number of revolutions of a gear D to attain this angular velocity. Gears A, B, C, and D have radii of 15 mm, 50 mm, 25 mm, and 75 mm respectively. So we are given that gear A rotates with a constant angular acceleration. So we can write that alpha A, the angular acceleration of gear A is 90 radian per second square. and it starts from rest so this means that the initial velocity of the gear a is 0 radian per second and we are required to determine the angular uh, the time required for gear d to attain the angular velocity of 600 rpm so we are given uh, omega d 600 revolution per minute so we need to convert this into radian per second so we know that uh, one revolution is 2 pi radians and one minute is equal to 60 seconds so revolution will cancel out and minute will cancel out and we will be left with 600 into 2 pi divided by 60 radian per second so omega d is equal to so this will be um 60 divided by 6 is 10 10 into 2 is 20 so this is 20 pi radian per second so the to so attain we need to find the time to attain this 20 pi radian per second velocity by this uh gear d now as we know that uh, this gear a and gear b they are in connection with each other so their uh, tangential velocity and tangential acceleration will be equal so we can say that the tangential acceleration of gear a this must be equals to the tangential acceleration of gear b and similarly we can say that r a since the tangential acceleration in angular motion is equal to r a times alpha a and this will be r b times alpha b now using this equation we can find alpha b the angular acceleration of gear b so alpha b will be equal to r a divided by r b if we divide both side of equation by r b so we will get this equation so alpha b will be equal to now we are given r a this r a is 15 mm r b is 50 mm r c is 25 mm and 75 mm so since we are dividing uh r a by r b so there is no need to convert the units since if we convert the units they, they are divided by each other so their units will cancel out so i will consider them in mm right so this is 15 r a is 15 mm and our b is 50 mm so mm mm will cancel and alpha a square so multiply by 90 so now the angular acceleration of gear b is 15 divided by 50 multiply by 90 so alpha b is 27 radian per second square so this is the angular acceleration of gear b now as we can see in this uh, gear box that uh, gear b and gear c they are on the same shaft so this means that alpha c the angular acceleration of gear c must be equals to the angular acceleration of gear b which is equal to 27 radian per second square and then further this gear c is in connection with gear d so again uh, the tangential acceleration of gear d that must be equal to the tangential acceleration of gear c and again we can write that the tangential acceleration of gear d will be rd 
into alpha D and this will be RC into alpha C now alpha D is we can say that alpha D is RC divided by RD into alpha C now RC is 25 and RD is 75 mm right so we can write that RC is 25 divided by 75 and alpha c is 27 so 27 region per second square 25 divided by 75 multiply by 27 this gives me 9 so alpha d is 9 radian per second square and now it is said that since gear a is um rotates with a constant angular acceleration so all the remaining gears will will also rotate with a constant acceleration since they are run by a single motor and they are in connection with each other so all of these gears are moving with a constant acceleration so we can use the constant acceleration equations for gear d now we are given the omega d so in order to achieve this angular velocity by gear d we need to find the time and initially all the gears were at rest right so we can use this equation to find the time required to achieve this angular velocity so we can write that uh, omega d is equal to omega d naught plus alpha c uh, sorry alpha d since we want to calculate it for gear d into t since all the gears are at rest initially so omega d naught this is zero and omega d is 20 pi so 20 pi is equal to alpha d alpha is 9 so 9 into t and t is equal to 20 pi divided by 9 so 20 pi divided by 9 this gives us 6.98 seconds 6.98 seconds so it took 6.98 seconds to achieve 20 pi radians per second angular velocity by gear d further in the problem we are required to find the number of revolution of gear d to attain this angular velocity so we are required to find the number of revolution so the number of revolution is the angular displacement so we can use this uh, third equation right and again i can write that third equation in terms of omega uh, in terms of gear d so that will be omega d square equals to omega d naught square plus 2 alpha d and that is constant right so 2 alpha dc so 2 alpha d into theta minus theta naught and since initially it was at rest so at that moment theta naught is also zero so we are considering that omega d starts from rest and this is also equals to zero so we can say that omega d square is equal to 2 alpha d into theta naught uh, sorry theta so theta is omega d square now omega d is 20 pi so 20 pi square divided by 2 alpha d if we divide both sides of equation by 2 alpha d so we will get theta equals to this so 2 alpha and alpha d is 9 so multiply by 9 now theta and this is theta d remember right so this is theta d the angular displacement covered by um, gear d so that is 20 pi square divided by 2 into 9 so that is 18 so 219 0.32 radians and we are asked to find the number of revolutions so we need to convert this angular displacement into um, revolutions so theta d equals to 219.32 radians and so one revolution is 2 pi radians so we need to divide that answer by 2 pi so this is 34.906 so 34.91 revolutions 
so gear d took uh, 6.98 seconds and 34.91 revolutions to achieve this 20 pi radian per second angular velocity so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope it will help you in your learning do subscribe engineers academy for the solution of such more problems from engineering dynamics by hibler